Hey everyone, welcome to Business in Heels and here we are on a lovely Friday afternoon discussing gender equity and all the amazing things that are happening. For many of you that know, the Gender Equity Awards are just around the corner. This is our second year going and I'm lucky enough to be sitting here with Anne O'Loughlin, the Managing Principal for Cultural Legal, who was actually last year's winner and again a finalist. So we're very excited to have Anne. She brings with her a wealth of experience. Not only is she the managing principal, but she's also a family lawyer. And who would have thought a law firm would be absolutely leading the way? So welcome, Anne. It's lovely to have you here. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks for having me. And uh, we are we were so excited as a, a team at Culture Legal last year to be winners. And it not that we needed inspiration to keep moving forward with um, gender equity, but it, it was a great boost and we were just so excited to, to win. So thank you and thanks everybody for listening. Well, and we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive into understanding why cultural legal is the way they are. So we thought we'd start off with you, Anne. So share with us some of your story and what has led you to be so passionate about gender equity. Thanks, Lisa. Well, I guess my story about gender equity goes back um, a number of years. So I um, was a very mature age law student and have been practicing for 18 years. So prior to that, I was a stay at home mum. And so one of the things that I was going to, uh, one of the things that made me really passionate about uh, this is would have been maybe 20 years ago, which is a long time ago now, I, but I can distinctly remember being at a, a corporate event um, in one of Melbourne's, uh, at a corporate event at one of Melbourne's big uh, sporting events. And I was sitting at a table and there would have been maybe seven men and three women. One of Melbourne's prominent state politicians at the time came to the table and asked all of the men what they did and ignored the three women. And I've never forgotten it, um, never. So I thought back then, gosh, you know, when you actually see it play out like that, how real mm -hmm. it is, um, you know, that there's just this perception that it was the men who were worth talking to and asking what they were doing as opposed to the women. So that was number one. Then when I completed uh, my law degree, I think I was 47 and I applied for 52 jobs and I got two interviews. Um, so that might go on to talk about ageism, but that's another topic. Um, and I went for an interview and it was with um, a, a firm in Melbourne and there was uh, one of the principals sitting behind a big desk and she asked me the following questions. How old I was? How many children did I have? what my husband did for a living and when he was going to retire. So I know for everybody out there I would be horrified at that, that you cannot ask those questions. So I just, another thing, there's some things are imprinted on your mind. Another thing I distinctly remember is walking out of there onto Collins Street and bursting into tears and phoning my husband and saying, what have I wasted the last four years of my life studying hard to be a lawyer? to come up against this. So um, I, I was just totally devastated. So, you know, I mean, gender equality uh, requires that people have um, equal enjoyment of opportunities, resources and rewards, you know, the opportunity to get a job, the, the opportunity to be paid a salary that, you know, this that it's based on performance and ability, not on, not on gender. So I think, Lisa, those are the things that stand out in my mind from a long time ago um, as to why I've been really passionate ab about um, gender equality. And, you know, having two daughters, you, you want for them what, you know, they should have and they should be able to have. And, and sadly, we've come a long way, but, you know, we still hear stories where there are, uh, you know, men are paid more than women doing the same job, things like that. So that shouldn't deter us from keeping pushing forward to, you know, to achieve what we need to achieve. But that's just a bit of a snapshot. When I thought back about this question, it started way back then. And then, you know, certain things along the way make you continue to be passionate about it and, and want to make a change. So... Hmm. 
Well, that leads us to our next question. So tell us a little bit, Anne, about what you're most proud of. Oh, well, um, I think it's what I'm most proud of is driving change um, in at Colter Legal. You know, I know we've got 75% of our, our staff are women. Um, so, you know, looking at, at what challenges are faced by both men and women once you have a family and um, accommodating people's competing demands and, you know, the mm. stress that that puts on people where you, you're wanting to fulfil your, your role in your job but you're also wanting to fulfil your role in your family and that's always a juggle for people. So, mm -hmm. you know, we've created um, flexible working arrangements, compressed working weeks so that people can work their um, five-day week within four days and, and uh, work longer hours, flexibility with working from home, flexibility working, you know, being able to take children to school and um, pick them up again at the end of the day and then working the rest of your hours around that. But in saying that, we really understand and have accommodated that caring arrangements are not just mum and dad and children or mum and children or dad and children. You know, mm. you may be caring for elderly relatives, um, you know, you may be a foster carer, you may be, you know, lots of lots of different responsibilities come in uh, to, in somebody's life that then they need to juggle their work. So for me, I think it was moving um, forward to make sure that we allow people to have that flexibility and not have that constant stress of how do I balance one against the other. So I think uh, I'm very proud that we've come a long way, um, a long way in doing that here at Culture Legal. And I, I think and I hope everybody feels that they have that opportunity to balance work and life. Uh, one of our major achievements, which I was really proud of, was the introduction of 18 weeks parental leave, uh, paid parental leave, um, irrespective of whether you're, you know, mum or dad or you're the, you know, don't like the term primary or secondary carer, but available for everybody. And the other important thing, which I think as a family lawyer, I noticed, you know, you'd have, and this is, um, being a bit stereotypical, but you'd have a couple and the one person who'd been in the workforce had significant superannuation entitlements. And generally, if the mum was staying at home, the superannuation entitlements weren't there because there was no superannuation paid during periods when um, of parental leave or, or maternity leave. So what we do here at Culture Legal is continue to pay superannuation entitlements throughout those 18 weeks, and, and, and that's really important. It, it's sort of a, a sense of empowerment for women that they continue to, mm -hmm. you know, to have that nest egg, if you like, of, of, of the superannuation um, entitlement. So, you know, in addition to that 18 weeks parental leave, the paid superannuation entitlements, the flexible working hours of, and um, those sort of benefits that people have, um, you know, we've also got leave entitlements to su to support our team where if someone's experiencing family or domestic violence, regardless of gender, because you know we we mm. we appreciate that there it's it, it it's not discriminating family violence and um, domestic violence. It affects so many people in our community, so we support that. Um, and I guess overall, um, Lisa, just as a bit of a snapshot, we do. Um, really encourage and live the values of um, balancing work and family commitments because we just know how important it is to everybody's well-being that they're not not suffering and, and often people sort of are suffering in silence thinking at home mm. how am I going to balance the the work commitments um, and my family commitments so that's something that I think um, uh, is one of my proudest achievements I think in in achieving all of those things that I've talked about and um, the willingness to listen to people and be open, have the open door policy that nobody has a fear of coming to any of our leaders and saying, this is what I'd like to do and we will consider it, you know, balance with the needs of the business, obviously, but we'll always use our best endeavours to, to achieve that. We've also got a suite of um, policies and strategies built around that to support it. So it's not just lip service. We've actually 
got policies um, so everybody knows what those policies are. And, you know, one of the other things I'm, I'm really proud of, and I know it doesn't happen everywhere, is remuneration based on performance and, and ability, not based at all on gender. So, you know, having that sort of system in place is really important. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's actually something I think the law profession is sitting around 23, 24%. So, you know, um, in the gender equity pay gap. So it's good to oh. know exactly what you're achieving. Um, and I think there's one other thing that you haven't touched on, which I'm so impressed with, is when people go away on leave, um, they're still eligible to be promoted. Like quite often it's out of sight, out of mind. Um, yes on parental leave so I think you've got a couple of people haven't you that yeah I was I was going to address that in, a bit later but I will say that now because that is true <laughs> we had, we had um, one of our um, uh, lawyers was appointed to principal lawyer position while she was on um, parental leave uh, which was which was great you know he, that would not have happened a number of years ago because you know it's only as you mm. learn and grow that you realize and then she's come back uh, full uh, on a part-time basis. Another one of our principals uh, is working part-time after being on parental leave. And, you know, there's a reintroduction process, um, you know, for people to come back so that they feel confident that um, when they return from work, or return from uh, parental leave, that they're sort of easily able to, to slot into their work again. But that was that was a huge achievement in, in having that lawyer you know, be appointed whilst on um, parental leave. So I know it hasn't happened here before. And just one more thing, you know, I know you talked about the uh, the gender pay gap uh, in the legal profession. The other um, issue in the legal profession was that, the, you know, the, the old-fashioned glass ceiling on how hard it was for women to break through that glass ceiling because they would go on parental leave or maternity leave and then come back and have to start again to try to to move through there. Mm. So that's something, and I was going to address it later. Something that, we've, that I'm very proud of that that's not what happens here. Um, and 75% of our leadership team are women. So you know, we again we live our values, and um, I'm I'm very proud of that. Yeah, well, and I think it's really fascinating because if for those of you who aren't as um, aware of the legal profession, uh, it's very rare to find um, a partner at a partner level that is part-time. You know, that's almost a preclusion to be a partner if you want to be part-time. And certainly almost nobody gets promoted whilst they're on parental leave. So, you know, there's two massive points of difference um, that culture legal are doing, which is really amazing. So well done yeah. to you. And we'll, as and we'll continue to do, Lisa, and continue to foster everybody's careers but not uh, not um, facilitating that that break in a career just simply because you um, have a child and then you you're on on maternity leave so yeah so certainly not a block at culture legal so and what advice would you give to others who are really passionate about advancing gender equity um, but may not know where to start? I think for me, and, and this goes across so many areas, um, um, is communication. Talk to your people. Get out there and see what, you know, see what they need. Have mm. and not ju just ask, but listen. You know, you can ask, but if you don't listen, you're not going to, people aren't going to feel confident that you that you will act or that they're even being heard. So it's allowing people to have a voice, feeling free to raise what whatever issues of need that they have and not thinking, oh, maybe. I remember um, it was probably maybe two years into my um, career here at Coulter Legal, I was driving from the other side of Melbourne to Geelong five days a week and it became really difficult. <coughs> Excuse me. I was terrified about asking to work four days a week because I thought no one else does it, no other lawyers work part-time. And I, it was accepted and I started working four days a week. So, you know, you need to listen to people and, and even if people feel that what they're asking for might be too much, let them listen to them and because that's the key. You know, you, 
we don't know what people need unless we listen to them and hear them. Um, but I ask them what their career aspirations are. We're a bit like before, we don't want the glass ceiling. Do they want to be a, a principal? Do they want to be in management? So sort of trying to work out mm. that career path and that succession path. Um, what what are the hurdles? Asking people, what are the hurdles that they face? How can we help you? Mm -hmm. you know, if someone's performance is slipping, go to them and ask them because it may well be something that can be fixed, but people are are afraid to, to talk about. But if you've got an open channel of communication, mm -hmm. I think that's the key. Um, and don't be bold. Don't be afraid to be bold. Um, you know, there might be some out, ideas out there that we haven't thought of and somebody else might have an idea. Oh, how, and I, I can't think of anything specific at the moment, but, you know, it's sort of even somebody saying, oh, well, what about superannuation entitlements when we're on parental leave? Great idea. And, you know, having that, however you do your communication, whether you have talk, town hall groups or, you know, sort of strategies like that. But I think listening, um, I think don't be afraid to be innovative and agile. Um, and yeah, and also keep informed about what's happening out there. Be aware of the challenges that face not only your industry, but that face um, everybody and lead to uh, there being a lack of um, gender equity because it's happening out there. And if you know about it, uh, you'll know what to address. But if you just turn a blind eye and bury your head in the sand and think we'll just keep going along as we are and everybody will keep working for us, uh, it's not going to happen. You know, there'll be disgruntled people. So keep informed, be bold and communicate would be my mm, great. recommendations. Some great advice. And I think today with War for Talent and it is a War for Talent across Australia, particularly in skilled workers, um, you need to have things that make a difference. And clearly at Culture Legal, you thought about that. Um, we just so, so how do you personally practice and embody the principles of gender equity in your everyday life and interactions? I, I thought long and hard about that one. And I think that I lead by example. I mean, there are times when my family is very, very important to me and I ha now have grandchildren and I have special, um, you know, things that I, at times I have to do with them. And so I think I lead by example about work-life balance mm. and encouraging people to, you know, don't be afraid to ask if you need to go to a child's sporting event or you need to go to, to something. And, you know, we will be flexible about that because we realise the importance. But if you don't lead by example and people see me chained to the desk um, five days a week, 12 hours a day, how are they then going to see that, oh, well, she really believes in this? So you've got to lead by example. And um, I think I do with my work-life balance. It doesn't, we don't always get it right, Lisa. I mean, sometimes I might be chained to the desk for 12 hours a day, five days a week. But in general, that's not what, not, what, not what I'm about. So I think um, leading by example, I think advocating... You know, like an example, being able to speak with you today and be able to be part of the Gender Equity Awards, it's advocate wherever possible um, to encourage change because if we don't, if we don't advocate, um, there won't be any change. Um, and I think the other thing is encourage understanding and empathy within the team as a whole of why we're doing what we're doing and that, you know, you might not need the flexibility, you might not need a compressed working week, you might not need unpaid leave, but there are team members who might and accept, understand and be empathetic uh, to the challenges that people face for a, a wide variety of reasons. You know, just be understanding, I think, would be, um, mm. you know, one of the ways that I, th that I hope that I um, personally practice and embody gender equality and I hope everybody at Culture Legal feels that they can come to me if they need if there's someone else that they can't come to and, and you just have to you just have to live it mm. don't just pay lip service to it actually live it which is which is the sign of a great leader that you live and you try I mean as you say we don't always get it right but it's, no, we don't. It's, it's the, um, you know, it's in the efforts and the passion and the desire to do the right thing. And people 
pick up that and really, really appreciate it. And clearly, you're doing well because Colter Legal continues to go from strength to strength. And we are very, very excited and on tender hooks about the results of um, next week. But even still, all the finalists that are through are amazing. And everybody is so passionate about this. And, you know, if you could just bottle and sell the passion, you know, we'd have gender equality overnight. Um, so it's it all promises to be a very exciting event. Thank you so much for joining us, Anne, and sharing with us a little of the initiatives and the great work that you're doing. Um, hopefully to all of you who've listened, you've got some really good ideas of what you can go and push back into your workplace. But um, what an extraordinary place to work. So very exciting. Very grateful that you've been willing to share that with us. And thank you, to, thank you to you, Lisa, and to Business in Heels. I think what you're doing is is wonderful, and we've just, as I said, we've just got to keep out there and keep going because one day we will we will get yep. there, and we won't be talking about you know the legal profession yep. and the twenty three percent. So that's what we're all trying to achieve. So thank you. Awesome.